Hey guys, what's up? It's me, Thomas. Tonight we're back here with Journey to the West, part 8 from Overly Sarcastic Production. Oh, if you guys remember last time, oh, memory serves, sorry, just remember. <laughs> Basically, they had to deal with the you know, river demon and these corrupt Taoist immortals. We'll see what I mean in a minute. So, not sure what's going to happen here, so let's just hop in and find out. Be sure to like, subscribe for more. Hope you enjoy. Let's go. Last time on Journey to the West, Tripitaka was once again abducted by a devious river-dwelling demon who was revealed to be the truant nephew of Ao Shun, the Dragon King of the West. With the help of the noble Prince Moang, the demon was defeated and our heroes continued westward, only to find yeah. themselves fugitives in a Buddhist enslaving kingdom ruled by three powerful demons in the guise of Taoist immortals. With Monkey's help, Tripitaka passed their numerous tests and won over the fickle-minded uh, king, and with the demons defeated, our heroes were free to continue their journey, journey to, the to the West. So our heroes are trekking oh, westward. Where now. Our way is barred by... Let me just spin this wheel real quick. A huge uh, river, easily yep. 800 miles wide. Pretty sure that technically qualifies as a miles? Sea, but long story short, they're stuck. Surprise, surprise. They spot a town nearby and head over for help and quest objectives and end up having dinner with these two rich old brothers who are very nice and don't even get butt hurt when Pigsy single-handedly threatens to eat them out of house and home. But while the town oh, may Pigsy. seem idyllic, we know what to expect from these things by now and the truth eventually comes out. Go. This region is ruled by the great king of miraculous power, a being who controls the weather and grants the town rain, but at a hefty price. Every year, the great king requires a sacrifice of two young children children, one boy and one girl from one of the families in town. This year it's the brother's turn. And wouldn't you know it, despite their advanced age, they each manage to have one kid, and these delightful youngsters are their pride and joy and also the only heirs they have. What a tragedy Oof. this is. After first suggesting that the men just use their immense yeah. wealth to buy two replacement children, Monkey remembers Dude. he's a good person Monkey. now and volunteers to help out by taking the boy's place. He also volunteers Pigsy to replace the girl. And after a lot uh. of complaining, Monkey and Pigsy disguise themselves as uh. the children and the townspeople carry them to the temple and run off. With a dramatic flourish, the great king appears, and unsurprisingly, Surprisingly, he's a big scary demon, but for all his scariness, he's completely unprepared for how nonchalant Monkey is about this whole being <laughs> sacrificed thing, and he gets so freaked out he goes after Pigsy instead. Pigsy freaks out and changes back, walloping the Great King with his rake and knocking a couple fish scales off him, which makes the Great King freak out yeah. and run away. Pigsy and Monkey chase him, and when the demon figures out who he's really dealing with, he freaks out even harder and vanishes into the river. Pigsy and Monkey yeah, figure that between the scales and the river thing, he's probably a river demon, and if they defeat him, mm -hmm. they might be able to find a way across. But that's a problem for after the victory party. With the kids safe, and nobody dead, dead our heroes return to a rousing celebration of their badassery. But not everyone is celebrating, as off yeah, in the river, the go. demon explains to his demon buddies why he didn't bring any leftovers and recounts his daring escape. But this year might not be a total bust. He recognized Pigsy and Monkey as disciples of Tripitaka, who he's heard is so magically delicious and nutritious that eating him would make them all immortal. But Monkey is so scary, and Pigsy too, I guess, that he's not sure <laughs> he'll be able to get to Tripitaka at all. But one of the demons has an idea on that front, and with her help, uh -oh. the great king begins hatching a plan. The next day, the gang wakes up to find the town blanketed in a beautiful layer of extremely unseasonal snow. This is very picturesque, but actually not good, because Tripitaka was hoping to borrow a boat to cross the river, and with the weather like this, a boat isn't going to do him any good. Plus, this journey is really starting to drag on. It's already been seven or eight years since Tripitaka first left Five the years, west, and all this waiting <laughs> is really getting to him. The old dudes try yeah, to cheer him up by serving him tea in their beautiful snowy garden, and Monkey calls Pigsy an absolute cretin for not recognizing the beautiful tranquility of a fresh snowfall. I guess you could call him an uncultured swine. Yeah. But Please as don't. they spend a beautiful hour. Yeah, honestly, if I've been like, like, what if Tomonkey, like, dude, not even the season for snow. Don't you think this is a little bit suspicious? Seriously, this could be one of the demons' hand drills, for I, I know. I don't know. Like, you know, Monkey, you think you would have realized, oh boy, we got another trap. What do we got this time? <laughs> Just saying, something you gotta look out for. Anyway afternoon drinking in the wonders of nature and also a bunch of tea, someone passing by outside loudly mentions that the cold snap has frozen the river solid and the people are starting to actually walk across it to start their seasonal trade with the Western Kingdom of Women, an empire of only women that lives on the other side. Well, if the river's actually frozen all the way through, then they can just Wait, walk across, trip, no, no need for a boat or a demon fight. So after first weatherproofing the horse and a few lessons from Pigsy and safe ice traversal, our heroes set out along the frozen river to continue their journey westward. Or at least that's yeah, the Yeah, here we go. The demon smashes through the ice and everyone but Monkey falls into the water. Pigsy and Sandy manage to retrieve the horse and their luggage, but Tripitaka is nowhere to be found, and with no better ideas, the gang Gosh. trudges back to town to regroup and think of a plan. Monkey is certain that Tripitaka is still alive, so he tells the old men to take care of their horse mm -hmm. and dry out their things, while he, Sandy, and Pigsy figure out how to get Tripitaka back. Unfortunately, Monkey is still no good underwater, so Pigsy carries him as they swim down to investigate. They find a massive underwater palace, and Monkey turns into a shrimp and sneaks in, finding Tripitaka oh. alive and well, but stuck in a box, very unhappy to be stuck in a box, and lamenting his frankly terrible luck with 
rivers. Monkey scoots back out, okay. suggests Sandy and Pigsy try to provoke the demon and lure him out of the water so Monkey can finish him off. You know, that strategy they've tried twice that has literally never worked. But you never know, maybe the third time's the charm. So Monkey pops back to the Let surface while Sandy no and Pigsy see third time? the demon out to play. But this time, the demon is actually prepared for a fight and brings out a very impressive looking mace. He and Pigsy brag about their respective weapons for a while until Sandy gets bored and attacks. They have a pretty sweet fight, and after a few rounds, Pigsy fakes defeat and runs for the surface. And when the demon follows, Monkey ambushes him, just as planned. But the demon oh. freaks out and does what he does best, <laughs> aka run away, and he's not about to take that bait a second time, so they can't lure him out for another go. So, officially uh, running out of okay. ideas, Monkey decides to pay Kuan Yin a visit to see if she has any insights. But when he arrives at the Southern Sea, Kuan Yin's entourage nervously tells him that this maybe isn't a good time, since she hasn't left what her happened? room all day, and specifically left orders not to be disturbed, especially by Monkey. Showing commendable Oof. restraint, Monkey waits a whole several minutes before bolting for Kuan Yin's private bamboo grove. That's where he finds Arf. Kuan Yin, still in her pajamas, with zero makeup, zero hairstyling, glumly weaving a basket out of bamboo. Ugh. That's a mood. Monkey has no idea what's going on, but he knows a okay. bad day when he sees one, so he immediately backpedals and humbly begs Kuan Yin for help in rescuing Tripitaka. Kuan Yin tells him to wait outside, and this time, Monkey actually listens. Nobody in her entourage- I mean, to be fair, Kuan Yin's, I think, one of the more powerful deities out there, so... Probably the best- I'm they're gonna need her help, so don't piss her off, especially when one's like a bad day, pajamas, no makeup, that's usually included, like, sorry for intruding, I'll be waiting outside. When you're ready. Yikes. Must be not a good idea. Anyway. Raj is entirely sure what's going on with her, but they can all tell that she seems really down and won't talk to anyone. Soon enough, Kuan Yin emerges with a completed okay. basket, tells Monkey to follow her, and blasts off without even getting dressed. They arrive at the okay, river, and Monkey bye. tries to explain what's happening to the others, except uh. since he doesn't actually know what's happening, he doesn't have much luck. Kuan Yin floats out uh -huh. over the river, drops her basket in the water, recites a spell, and then retrieves the basket, a which fish? now contains exactly one very confused goldfish. Then she tells eh. Monkey to go save Tripitaka. But what about the demon? Everyone say hello. So yeah, it turns out that the demon was, the was actually demon? Kuan Yin's beloved pet goldfish, which got powered up by what? listening to her lectures and decided to turn into a demon and start eating kids. She was very upset wow. when she realized he was missing and dove straight into finding a way to get him back, which is why she was so unput together today. Because of a goldfish. Because he got beat up by a goldfish. With the boss demon out of the way, Ouch. they easily rescue Tripitaka, and meanwhile, Poor the townsfolk Kuan are so awed by Kwan, <laughs> I woke up like this yin, that they all troop out to worship her and make a bunch of art about it. With Tripitaka unkidnapped yeah. and everything basically resolved, they still have to figure out a way to cross right. the river, which is when a huge a white turtle shows up. Apparently, he's the guy who actually oh. owns this river, and with the goldfish gone, oh. he's back oh. in charge. As thanks for restoring his position, he carries the gang across the water himself, asking only that they give him Thank some you. tips from the Buddha to help him finally shed his turtle shell and gain a human form. So with that, oh, fishy yeah, business sorted out, our heroes can continue oh. on their journey to the west. And they do for a while, but the weather gets colder and the going gets harder, and eventually they run into a, let me spin this wheel here, huge mountain barring their way. It's not totally impassable, but it's very narrow and treacherous and probably okay, full of scary wild animals, so everyone's a bit on edge. As they make their way through the mountain, they eventually spot some signs of life, a mansion and a cluster of houses nestled in one of the valleys. Tripitaka suggests they stop there to get mm. some food and rest up. But unfortunately, but perhaps unsurprisingly, Monkey can see ominous yep. dark clouds clouds around the town and figures it's not worth the inevitable demon attack. Careful, he's learning. He convinces Tripitaka to stay put and let him go off and get them some food. Then he stops, comes back, draws a circle around Tripitaka with his staff here, and tells okay. him not to step outside it. The circle will act as a ward and keep him safe from everything in the area as long as he doesn't huh. leave. Job, Tripitaka monkey. promises not to and Monkey Just blasts off to find some food. But while Monkey's pursuit of munchies inevitably gets him into his normal level of shenaniganery, Pigsy, who else, gets cold and bored and starts trying to convince Tripitaka to leave. After all, how can a circle drawn on the ground protect them from anything? That's just silly. Don't Plus, Monkey's it. really fast, so it shouldn't be a problem for him to catch up Andy. to them, and moving around will help them keep warm. Yeah, Tripitaka okay, is convinced, okay. and they leave the circle and make Damn a beeline for the spooky, ominous mansion. Pigsy heads inside to look around and finds the whole space deserted except for a very large skeleton in an upper room and three very shiny, warm vests. Pigsy grabs the vests and reports back, and Tripitaka is mortified that he desecrated a grave, but Pigsy reasons the dead guy's not about to complain, and he and Sandy put him on, which turns out to be a bad idea, as the vests and are enchanted and immediately tie them up. What? A trap? I can't believe it. So, unsurprisingly, Pixie, this, this region is ruled by a God. demon, specifically the old and powerful single-horned rhinoceros king. And this whole place is a trap he set up. He has his minions cart the gang over to his cave and demands an explanation from Tripitaka, who apologizes for his disciples' rudeness and asks that they please be allowed to continue along their journey. But the demon's not exactly in the negotiating mood, since he knows if he eats Tripitaka, he'll regain his youth. But Pigsy brags <laughs> that Tripitaka's absent disciple is none other than the Monkey King, which does make the demon hesitate, so he puts them in cold oh. storage while he figures out what to do about Monkey. Speaking of whom, Monkey finds the circle
vehicle empty, the suspicious demony town gone, and the gang nowhere to be found. What a surprise. He follows the horse hoof prints for several miles without finding anybody and is starting to get seriously disheartened when a couple of travelers oh, tell him that guys. they saw his companions getting kidnapped by a very powerful local demon. Monkey's about to run off to find him when the travelers reveal that they're actually the local mountain gods and ask him to leave oh, the bowl of rice with them for safekeeping. Monkey is pretty pissed they disguise themselves, but they point out that he is pretty dangerous to deal with on a bad day, which he acknowledges is fair. He's become yeah, self-aware. So Monkey starts searching don't. for the inevitable demon cave and eventually spots a set of double there doors in the mountainside guarded by a bunch of imps. He lands, knocks on the door, and orders the demon to come out and face him. Now the demon is actually stoked about this because he's been craving a worthy opponent ever since he first descended to Earth. His imps bring him his lance and he goes to confront Monkey. They banter for a bit. The demon accuses Tripitaka of stealing from him, Monkey insists that Tripitaka is way too much of a weenie to do something like that, and they fight. <laughs> it's an epic there battle and they're just about evenly matched, and the demon compliments Monkey's strength from his infamous rampage through heaven. But clearly the demon is not actually that interested in fighting fair since he sends his army of imps to attack Monkey, who responds by tossing his staff in the air and magically multiplying it to bombard them all at once. But it turns out this is what the demon was waiting for. He pulls out a white jade ring and throws it into the air. The copies all shoot back into one staff, which then gets sucked into the ring and disappears. Now completely disarmed, Monkey's at a serious disadvantage and has no choice but to run. The demon returns to his cave in triumph, and Monkey, in a bit of a daze, tries to figure out what to do next. But Monkey snaps out of the funk when he remembers the demon mentioned witnessing his rampage through heaven, meaning he was there. So he must have originally been a celestial spirit. Since it's always good to know your enemy, oh, yeah. Monkey jets up to heaven to politely ask if anyone up there can help him figure out who the demon is. He is a lot nicer when he doesn't have his staff. The Jade Emperor sets up an internal investigation, but can't find anyone missing, so he offers to send some gods to help Monkey fight the demon. Monkey's like, oh man, I mean, sick offer, but like, I, I kind of kicked all your asses 500 years ago. I, I don't know if you forgot, but Dude. like... So if don't I him. couldn't do anything, I don't really know if any of you could. Oh, dude! Do you still have that really sassy 12-year-old? So Monkey grabs eternal 12-year-old Prince Nada and his long-suffering yeah. father, Devaraja Lee, plus an army of more generic divine soldiers and a couple of thunder squires to throw lightning at the problem. Let's... So Nada insists on going first, and he and the demon fight Careful, for a Nada. while before Nada switches into his three-headed, six-armed war form and starts really kicking ass. However, when he tosses his weapons into the air to multiply them, the demon pulls out the ring yep. again and Here all we go again. Nada runs for his life, and the thunder squires quietly thank their better judgment that they didn't try throwing their lightning too. They try and think of a weapon the ring couldn't suck up, and they think that maybe fire could work, so Monkey zips back up to heaven to conscript the help of the Star of Fiery Virtue, the god in charge of Mars, who turns out to be a mild-mannered bureaucrat who's significantly less powerful than the other warriors in play, but he's happy to help out if he can. This time, Devaraja Lee provokes the demon, and when he comes out to fight, the Star of Fiery Virtue unleashes an onslaught of flaming weapons and fire spirits, which are all sucked into the oh, ring and disappear. On. Dang it. Guess that's what we get for relying on Steve from Heaven Accounting. But Monkey's not out of ideas just yet. Yeah, this time he goes to the Dark Vastness Palace and conscripts the Star of Watery Virtue. Wielding a small white jade chalice containing half hey the waters of the Yellow River, the Star of Watery Virtue joins the fight. But when he unleashes the water into the cave, the demon uses the ring to reverse the water, sending the deluge oh, down the mountain on. instead. Unfortunately, the Star of Watery Virtue can't put the water back, so they have to wait for it to drain away. And Monkey gets so dang frustrated, he storms up to the cave and demands the demon fight him hand to hand. The demon actually agrees and they have a spectacular martial arts duel, which eventually escalates into a full-on brawl when the other gods and demons join in. Monkey also duplicates himself a bunch, but the demon uses the ring to vanish oh, the copies on. and decides retreat to reevaluate their next moves. The gods compliment Monkey nice. on his badassness in cool form, and Devaraja Lee says he's pretty sure Monkey is the better fighter. Without the jade ring, the demon can't win, so they should probably find a way to oh. steal it. One of the Thunder Squires points out that Monkey is probably the best qualified person in the universe to steal something like that, considering how much stuff he stole from heaven back in the day. Guys, you're gonna hmm. make him blush. That work. So Monkey turns into a fly and sneaks into the cave, past the demons, who are all having a big party, and finds a hall with everything the ring vanished in it. He can't find the ring itself, but that doesn't matter so much because he finds his staff, and is so stoked to have it back, he immediately smashes his way out of the cave Head in off! The demon and his army obviously chase him, and they battle for about three hours. But when the sun goes down, the demon calls for time out, Monkey says no time outs, and the demon bolts back into the cave. Everyone showers Monkey with compliments and praise, and he figures hey, that focus, now that the focus. demon's all tuckered out, he can just sneak in and look for the ring on his own time. So Monkey Remember turns that? into a cricket and sneaks into the cave, but when he spots the demon getting ready for bed, he notices a problem. The demon is wearing the jade ring on his arm. Monkey tries and fails to dislodge it, and eventually decides to do the next best thing. He goes back to the hall with all the weapons, reduplicates himself, steals all the weapons, frees all the fire spirits, and smashes his way out of the now burning cave, riding yeah. a fire dragon like the first class badass he is. The demon is very unhappy that his cave is now super on fire, while the divine army is very happy to have all their weapons Thank back. God. But in spite of how super cool that play of the game was, the demon still has the ring, oh, and it doesn't on. take very long for him to use it 
to steal all their weapons back. Boo. So the Heavenly Host dissolves into arguing, blame placing, and infighting, and Monkey finds himself living out his worst nightmare of being the voice of reason. So he decides that when all else fails, he should probably check in with the Buddha and see if he has any ideas. So Monkey flies off to the Thunderclap Monastery and drops in on the man himself. Oh boy, nobody tell Tripitaka it's that easy. Buddha is kind of surprised uh -huh. to see him there, all alone without Tripitaka and the others, and Monkey fills him in on the situation. Now Buddha figures out who the demon is pretty much immediately, but refuses to tell Monkey because he knows <laughs> Monkey doesn't know how to shut up, and would instantly brag Oof. about how he learned the demon's true identity, and he just really doesn't want to deal with that right now. So instead, fair, he has his 18 Arhats gather 18 grains of cinnabar sand to magically paralyze the demon. Monkey jokes oh, around with the Arhats, who seem like pretty cool dudes, and they fly back to the mountain. Monkey goes to lure the demon out, but then the demon taunts him about how he's super gonna kill his friends, so Monkey drops the goofs and attacks him for real. The Arhats make their move and dump the sand on the demon, and it grows into a huge pile that threatens to bury him completely, until he uses the ring to make it disappear. Man, this guy sucks. Get it? Dude, Look, if I thought stop. of it earlier, I would have said it earlier. But two of the Arhats tell Monkey that Buddha secretly told them oh, that zoo? if the sand didn't work, Monkey should go and ask Lao Tzu for help. Monkey's cranky, they couldn't just tell him that in the first place, but you know how Buddha does, so he jets off to go bother Lao Tzu. But as he's filling him in on the situation, he yeah. noticed something's missing from Lao Tzu's lab. His Wait, green awful. buffalo is conspicuously absent. Apparently... He had one of those. And apparently ah. the lad guarding it thought eating a random elixir pill he found on the ground was a super good idea and it knocked him out for a week straight, during which time the green buffalo escaped and headed to Earth to fulfill his dreams of fighting worthy opponents and eating monks. Searching the lab, Lao Tzu realizes his Wait. diamond snare is also missing, the thing he used to finally capture monkey during his rampage through heaven. Apparently that's, that's the true it. form of the jade ring the demon's been using to steal everyone's stuff. Lao Tzu grabs his fan and storms off for Let's a little go. disciplinary training. When monkey and Lao Tzu arrive on the scene, the demon freaks out and hucks the ring, which doesn't work out so hot, when Lao Tzu catches Thank it with you. one hand. Then he swings the fan, and the demon immediately reverts to his true form, no problem. Lao Tzu leads Ugh, the former demon, now just regarding variety green buffalo, back to his lab. Monkey retrieves the weapons and rescues the others, He's no problem. And with that eventful buffalo? trip down memory lane all sorted out, they are finally back on track to continue their journey to the, journey west. To the west. Will Tripitaka's luck with mountains and rivers finally improve? Will Pigsy no. learn to stop being the inciting incident in every episode? And what no. was that thing about an empire of only women? Find out next time we'll on time. Journey to the West. Well... There we go. Well, yeesh, that map is to be embarrassing. Goldfish demon and a buffalo demon. I mean, I gotta say, the buffalo one was annoying. Like, seriously, just able to steal their weapons like that. Just, just like, come on. Like, every time it just sucks something out there. Okay, seriously, what else? What up? Other than that. Anyway, until next time, guys, thanks for watching. Adios.